All right, so welcome back, everybody. So for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play Istanbul. Now this is an AEG game, and you'll also notice that this is an this is also a library game. This is a game I got from the library. So I'm going to show you guys how to play this game. So by the look of the cover, these are rubies, right? Well, the object of the game is to collect rubies. That's what you want to do, and the player who you know, collects uh, six rubies all together, and it might be five rubies if you're playing with more than two players, but if you're playing with two, two rubies, I mean two players, you want to get six of these rubies, okay? That's the object of the game, is to try to get six rubies, and everyone, is, is, everyone in this game is going to get an equal amount of turns, so if your opponent still has another ch still has another turn to complete, even though you just acquired six rubies, they will get one more turn and so, and then maybe perhaps be able to get their sixth ruby as well, who knows. But the object of the game is obviously whoever uh, can get six rubies first wins basically, or who can get six wins, and if the other player also manages to get six, then you'll have different ways of breaking the tie. A lot of different ways of breaking the tie. Now, in this game, Instant Bull, you're gonna obviously want to get the rubies, and there are lots of different ways of getting rubies in this game. One of the ways you can get rubies is by visiting the um, gemstone dealer over here. This is the gemstone dealer, and if you spend, for the first ruby to acquire here, it's gonna cost you 15 lira, so money. It's gonna cost you 15 lira, okay? That's a lot of money. You only start with two, and then the, th the second player would get three lira. So that's a lot of lira, just to get one. But then, once you acquire that ruby, meaning once you get this ruby here, by spending 15 lira, then you get to put this ruby that you just collected into a uh, wheelbarrow, so let's so there's the wheelbarrow so you're gonna put this ruby into your wheelbarrow now one thing you'll notice right away is the wheelbarrow is has a humongous hole in it okay well these are goods these four are goods here and you start with zero goods and you can only have up to two of each good until you can start filling in your wheelbarrow okay this is what you're going to do. You're going to put the ruby right here into your wheelbarrow. And once you have six, then if the other player, you know, still has a turn possibly, then they will have an option to maybe get their sixth ruby if they can. Now, after you spend the, the 15 lira to get the ruby from the gemstone dealer, the next time somebody wants to purchase uh, a ruby, they're going to have to spend one additional lira. So instead of 15, it's going to be 16 money. And for every gemstone that is taken here, it's just going to get more and more expensive, obviously. So if you were to acquire uh, all of your rubies from the gemstone dealer, it would take probably quite a while because it just gets more and more expensive. Now, there are other ways of getting rubies. Okay, there's actually uh, four other locations where you can obtain rubies. And one of those is actually going to be for your wheelbarrow. So let's talk about the Wainwright tile right here. So this is the tile next to the gemstone dealer. This Wainwright, Wainwright tile here, if you place and move, if you go here, for the cost of seven li lira, you are going to get an extension for your wheelbarrow. And so you spend the seven, then you'll get this extension, and then you'll get to put the extension into your wheelbarrow, like so. And so now I have more room for goods. We will talk about goods and how that's all going to work later down the road. But once you have acquired your third, once you have acquired your third extension, because there's going it's gonna require three extensions to finish this wheelbarrow here, once you've done it, you're going to acquire a ruby. And you'll notice there are two rubies here. You get you put one for each player, and if there's if you're playing with five people, then there's only going to still be only four there. But the point is, you get one 
only one from the Wainwright, okay? You'll never be able to acquire the second one from the Wainwright, unless, of course, the other player was able to finish their wheelbarrow. Then they would be able to acquire that ruby as well. So that's the second way you can get rubies. You can get rubies by finishing your wheelbarrow. And you're going to want to do that because you're going to want to get as many goods as you can. And if you're limited to only two goods, then that means half the stuff that you want to do in this game, you won't be able to do. So you're definitely going to want to come here as much as you can and obviously uh, acquire extensions for your wheelbarrow. So that's the second way you can acquire rubies in this game. The third way here is here at the Sultan's Palace. Okay, you'll notice there's a lot of rubies, just similar to the uh, gemstone dealer as well. You'll also notice that there are a bunch of different colored goods here. So if you want to acquire the first ruby that is here at the Sultan's Palace, you're going to have to pay one of these blue ones, which is jewelry, one of these red ones, which is silk, one of these green ones, which is spices, one of these yellow ones, which is fruit, and then you'll notice this one has four different colors. That means you can use one of the four that you have, but you must use one of the four you have as well. So let's say if I had uh, only one blue um, and I used it on that, let's say I only had uh, one red and I used it on that, let's say I had uh, only one yellow, so I used it for that, for the purchase, but I had two green. I could do one green, and then this would be the color I could go for. I could go for green for this one because it's a wild. And then I basically pay those resources. So, for instance, if this was the co correct equation, I had one blue, one red, two green, and one yellow, I would have enough to, to collect my first ruby from that location, okay? Now, when you uncover a ruby from this location, what's going to happen is it's going to add an additional resource to the cost. So the next time a player comes here, they're going to have to do everything you did, but they're also going to have to pay that extra resource, which is another blue. And these jewelry uh, resources are harder to get than the other three. So it obviously pays to come here first rather than maybe even, you know, visiting the gemstone dealer first but that's your that's the third way that you're going to acquire gems okay now there are two other ways that you can acquire gems so let's show you those so back up here so we have the great mosque on the left here and we have the small mosque on the right here um, what's really interesting is you're going to actually have to get both tiles. There's a blue tile, a yellow tile on this side, a red tile on this side, and a green tile on this side. You have to acquire both of the tiles, one of each, I mean, you can't, meaning you can't get both of the same kind. You have to get one of each of the different colors. So you'd have to get one green, one red, you'd have to get one yellow and one blue. But once you acquire one green, and one red, you get a ruby for your troubles as well. So once you acquire the second color from the small mosque, you would obtain a ruby in doing so, which is nice. And then for the uh, great mosque over here, you'd also acquire a ruby as well once you had both the yellow and the blue. Now these tiles, they have abilities on them. So it's not just simply getting a tile. You also get an interesting, really cool ability. We'll talk about tile abilities and card abilities later, but you would get this awesome ability here. We won't talk about it, but it's awesome, okay? Now, you'll also notice that there is two red up the top, okay? And there's an arrow right next to that red. Now, um, this means that in order to acquire this tile, you must have two red or two silk in your wheelbarrow okay you must have two in your wheelbarrow so you which is nice because you in the beginning of the game that's the most you can have anyways so it's possible to obtain this tile in the beginning of the game because you, you may, may only have two but you also notice it has this arrow here now i didn't know this at first but now i do 
So you have to have the two silk to do this tile, or if you had, if you were going for the green one, you would have to have two spices. Same thing with uh, two fruit and two jewelry for the great mosque. But this arrow indicates you're only having to spend one silk to acquire this tile, which is awesome. I thought I had to spend two silk, but it's actually one silk. So you only have to spend the one silk to acquire this tile, which is nice. Which means you get to keep your other silk that you had to have available. You just didn't need it, but you had to have it regardless, which is fascinating. Because after I was, if I was to acquire this tile, and the other player wanted to uh, complete the small mosque so they could get their ruby, well, that means they would need more extensions in their wheelbarrow because they would have to have at least four uh, silk, okay? They'd have to have at least that much, but they still only need to pay one silk. So they have to have four silk, but they, but they only pay one silk. That's awesome. I thought you had to pay all four, but you only have to pay one regardless, but you have to have four. So that means it pays to come to the small mosque have these resources, get them ahead of time before your other opponents, otherwise you will definitely need more extensions in your wheelbarrow before you can acquire the second one. Now if you're playing with more than two people, there will be more than two of each color, but that's the point, is you're, you, if you don't get the first one, you're gonna have to get some more extensions to get the second one, okay? So that's going to work for all the other three tiles as well. They're also going to need that exact number if uh, that's the case. So those are all the different ways you can collect rubies. So if you were to get a ruby from the Great Mosque, a ruby from the Small Mosque, and a ruby from the Wainwright, well that's three rubies. That means you need three more in order to complete the game, in order to win the game, basically, right? Meaning, if you were to obtain a ruby from both the Sultan's Palace and the Gemstone Dealer, you would still need one ruby, which means you would need to either get it from the Sultan's Palace or the Gemstone Dealer, your second, your last ruby, basically, okay? So that's how that's going to work. Now, there's other tiles here. There's a lot of other stuff going on for sure, but that's basically how you're going to obtain rubies. That's what you want to do. Now, in the next video, we'll talk about the rest of the tiles and what they do and what you're going to get if you go to them. Okay, because there's quite a few more here. There's the post office, there's the fabric warehouse, there's the spice warehouse, the fountain, the police station, the fruit warehouse, the black market, the caravansary, uh, the small market, the tea house, the large market as well. Okay, so there's lots more, uh, t lots more areas that you can go that we'll talk about in the next video. So let's, let's get to them in the next one.